I'm Jackie. I'm an Arizona realtor and have built a multi-million dollar business with my husband by using what I learned from being a teacher. Now I'm bringing the steps I took to leave the classroom and become a top producing agent and team owner. So grab your coffee, cherry vanilla Coke, or maybe even a cocktail, and let's begin. Well, 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 how is everyone today? Um, well, I'm doing wonderful. And I hope you're doing great. I hope you're staying healthy. I hope you're gaining wealth in your business. I hope you're feeling your level of confidence rise and you're experiencing joy in your life. But today, we're going to talk about a mindset reset. Now, if you have been in education for any period of time, you already know what I'm talking about, right? Whether it's the water cooler drama, you know, you know what I'm talking about. We ain't talking about when the kids are complaining. No, 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 no. We're talking about when Mrs. Negative Nancy from room 227 comes on down and you're having a great old day, but now she wants to talk about how this person's on her nerves and this person, and man, they're going to make her do more stuff. No, guys, stay away from the water cooler, okay? Maybe it's kids being kids. You know, we can't expect them to be perfect. They're little bitty humans, right? Uh, maybe it's more work being put on your plate, maybe from an admin. Or maybe, I don't know, possibly it's teaching during a pandemic. Yeah, that could give you, give you a mindset reset. It can get stressful. Your mindset can get foggy. Your focus can be changed. And now you're in a position of counting down the days until the next break, the next weekend, the end of the school year. Heck, maybe you're counting down to retirement. I love how people who aren't in education think that our job as a teacher is so easy. Guys, they think we go into a room full of children who are well-mannered and all learn from the same style of teaching. They think we have massage chairs in the teacher's lounge. Guys, I'm not kidding. I actually had a kid tell me one time, don't you have massage chairs in there? Yeah, and a margarita machine kid. Come on now. No, we have a lumpy couch that nobody even sits on because you don't know the last time it was cleaned. We do not just get to enjoy long holiday weekends. Most of us don't have a lake house or a cabin in the woods. Seriously, guys, these are the things people think. Now, I will tell you this. My mindset usually needed a good reset right after the Martin Luther King holiday. And this is why, okay? So we have Christmas break off. We're off for a couple weeks. We get to hang out with our family, kind of give ourselves a little bit of, you know, break, right? In between, you know, trying to make sure we get all of our shopping done, everything wrapped, then everything put away, then all of the Christmas decorations put down. And don't even get me started if you're in a city where there's a lot of snow. Dude, that stuff stays up until like spring break. Okay. So anyhow, we come back after winter break. Then we're off that one coveted Monday in January, usually the last couple weeks, right? Guys, we don't have another day off until spring break, right? That time was the worst. It felt like it was going on and on. Remember in <laughs> Alice in Wonderland where they showed the calendar of March and it was like the R came out? I can't even remember why that happened. I think it was something about the oysters or whatever. It's when the, the guy, the walrus, anyhow, I'm totally sidetracked. But anyhow, my point is during that time in the year, you really do need a mindset, right? Okay. I would find myself praying for enough snow to cancel school. And then it would happen, and then I would be disappointed it happened because now I had a shortened summer break. Well, guess what? Real estate is the exact same way. You can get in a rut. Your mindset can need a reset. Just like there was a water cooler, you know, on the floor that you were, you know, walking past as you were taking the kids to the library. Guess what? There's a water cooler everywhere with real estate, okay? Come on now. So I'm gonna identify some strategies to help you kickstart a mindset reset in your real estate business. Heck, this could also go for teaching. All right, so let's get started. Number one, first thing you need to do, you need to choose a goal. Now for some people, this may be easy. Some people know what they actually want. If that's you, great, name your goal. Now make sure it's meaningful, not just something you think you should do, but something you really, really, truly in your heart want to happen. So I'm going to share you all my goal. Why did I actually leave teaching? Because I get asked this question all the time. Now, while there was lots of different reasons, the pandemic, I have four kids, a lot of my kids needed more of mom, 
And I thought in my head, oh, this will be great. I'll have more time. No, I have no more time. Okay. I actually have less time. The only thing is I don't have to make sub plans if I need to take a day off. Now, here's my goal. So I'm a Christian and it's extremely important to me to give back to my community. Now, in the Bible, Jesus talks about helping the children, the children and the orphans. Those are the people that we really need to pour our heart into. So when I was in high school, I was a part of an Acts program. Okay. So it was um, Acts of Christian something. I can't remember. Anyhow, it was a service. Okay. And one of the places where I got to volunteer was this kid's cafe. So this kid's cafe is down kind of in like, you know, a forgotten part of the city, you know, lots of at-risk kids, lots of kids kind of taking care of their younger brothers and sisters while their parents are trying to just pay the bills and work in two jobs. Right. So anyhow, these kids would get dropped off there by their school bus at the, you know, at the end of the school day, they would come in, they would get, you know, a snack or they would have dinner. There would be tutors there that would help them out with their schoolwork. Um, there was games. It was like, there was a rec center. It was just, it was really cool. So anyhow, I grew up thinking these things are everywhere. Well, guess what? They're not. And even the ones that were in my city are now gone because the funding went away. So in my head, I said, you know what? A goal that I want is I want a place called the table. It would be this huge warehouse where kids could come and families. So every night there would be dinner served. And I'm not talking about ravioli from a can, guys. Okay, I'm talking I would have chefs that would be willing to come in, donate their service, and actually prepare a good, healthy meal. Because guess what? Obesity is a real thing. Having diabetes is a real thing. Having heart disease is a real thing. And healthy food is expensive. So I want to be able to create a place where people can have good food. Okay. I want them to get the nutrients that their body needs. So that way their brain can work better and they're going to feel healthier. They're not going to get sick. Anyhow, you get it. Now, alongside of actually providing this food for them, there would be teachers or soon to be teachers. They would be coming from the local universities. Now, we all know when you're in school to be a teacher, you know, you have those volunteer hours where you have to go and observe. Well, what I would want to be is an accredited place where teachers who were in their program could come and meet the kids that they are going to be serving. Would it not have been amazing to see those families? Now you see them from the whole thing. You don't just see that kid in class who's throwing a tantrum or trying to do anything to get out of the room because they're hungry. You actually see what those kids are going through each and every day. Don't you think that would make us better? So anyhow, not only would you have teachers and you would have chefs, but I would also have motivational speakers coming in. Because one thing we know, our at-risk kids are more at risk to dropping out of school, to getting into acts of crime, to going into jail, just the laundry list of things that just starts happening to them. Opportunities that they thought were available just start slipping through their fingertips. I would also want to have career counselors there, people who would be willing to work and give grants so that way parents could go back and further their education, people that would help them make resumes for the parents. I want this whole thing. And the reason why is because it's my goal. And so every time I get tired of working hard or staying up late or, you know, getting that seventh no when I called someone to ask them if I could list their house. I look at my goal and I say, you know what? I'm just going to have to keep going because I haven't met my goal yet. When I remember what my goal is, my mindset goes from poor pitiful me to, all right, Jackie, let's get this going. Here's the second one. You need to step into the future. Now, this shocks a whole lot of people because you would think you would just start at the beginning. No, uh, -uh. I want you to actually step into your future, the future where you have already achieved your goal. I want you to see it. I want you to feel it. I want you to really go there. Allow yourself to feel the pride. Allow yourself to feel the excitement. This is crucial. When you step into your future, it shifts from your perspective and your emotions. It helps you to get emotionally connected to your goal. Guys, when I talk about my goal, it completely changes my everything. It changes my face. I smile more. I get more excited. I talk with my hands. You would think I like, I don't know, was doing sign language, but no, like I'm seriously talking with my hands because I'm so passionate about it. Guys, step into your future. Number three, 
What do you have? Take an inventory. Okay, now this helps you see exactly what you already got going on for you, which is way more than you think. We are programmed to think about what we don't have. What do others have that we want? Dude, stop that. Focus on what you do have. Next one, what do you need? Once you know what you have, you can determine what you need. So you're sitting there being super productive, right? And immediately you get overwhelmed. Well, what do you need? Maybe you need an assistant who will answer your emails for you. Maybe you need a virtual assistant who will take care of your social media. Maybe you need a TC or a transaction coordinator who will be your partner through the transaction and help you with the paperwork and timelining. Guys, make a list of what you need. Number five, what's stopping you? What's stopping you? Now, guess what? Gremlins, they will creep up and start getting in your ear. You need to tell them to shut up. You have the power to change your beliefs. Beliefs are just a pathway. Guys, it's it's been used enough to make you feel like it's a reality. Now, I read this once. If you do something with enough repetition, it becomes your new pattern. Well, with repetitive thinking, you can trigger your brain to think differently. Whatever is stopping you, call it out and then get rid of it. Number six, take action. It's now time. It's now time to figure out what your actions are that you need to take to reach your goal. So here's some questions to ask yourself. What if it were easy? What would you do? What must happen in order for you to take massive strides towards your goal? Do you need training? Get training. Be a self-advocate. Do you need a mentor? Get a mentor. Get a good one. And if you need one, I can help you out. All right. Continue to educate yourself. What if your limiting beliefs were suddenly gone? Then could you take your action? What's one thing you can do today to get started? Maybe your goal can't happen right now. My goal right now, I can't do it. I cannot go get a commercial loan, open up this huge thing. I don't have the resources for it. But what can I do now to get me started? I can share my belief with people who can make that goal happen. I can continue to talk about it. I can keep making it at the forefront. I can continue to tell my partners about it. The more people who are involved, it doesn't have to have my name on the door. I want this to happen for my community. So guess what? The more that I talk about it, the more reality it's going to happen. That's what I can do right now to get started. And the last thing, you need to celebrate. You need to celebrate what you are accomplishing by shifting your focus from, well, I didn't do this to, dang, look what I did. You will start having a better mindset. Mindset is everything. If you don't believe in your own self, how do you expect other people to believe in you? Going into real estate can seem scary. Starting something new can be a challenge. But you, yes you, I'm talking to you right there. You keep the attention of 24 to 32 children a day for seven hours. You maintain peace in a sea of hormones and body odor. You can do this and I'm here to help. Make sure to follow me on Instagram at Jackie Durbin AZ and my new handle, Teachers um, in Real Estate. Also like, share and rate this podcast. And if you need help or you have state specific questions, reach out to me and I'll gladly help. Just to let you know, my husband and I just launched our own real estate school. Yes, we have a real estate school now. And it's not just for people who are in our local state. It's for all 50 states. If you'd like that information, connect with me on Instagram and send me a message and I'll shoot you the link over. Guys, you can do it. Change your mindset change your life. Let's do this.